Weekly on 10 Awesome Songs, our primary goal is to expose some gems that perhaps have been washed away through time. However, with this episode specifically, we're looking at those obscure gems from bands that perhaps are no longer with us, either that, or ones that have been dug so deep that it needs to be exposed to a new generation. We need to resurrect them from the analog cemetery and the digital graveyard, and that's what we plan to do here on songs number 71 through 80 on 10 Awesome Songs. Number 10, we have Herbie Hancock with Chameleon. This is Jazz Fusion, and it's from 1973. It's odd to have this on a list of primarily metal songs, but this is something that's extremely important. This is from the album Headhunters for back in 73, and it showcases that Jazz Fusion at its bare bones inception has the same free form prose and form uh, and really construction and altogether randomness that you would see from jazz fusion bands, even of the metal variety today. You can definitely tell where bands such as Atheist or uh, Cynic are able to get some of their ideas from, even if they weren't directly influenced from Mr. Hancock. This is a song that's almost 15 minutes in length and undulates between a couple of different movements, and certainly is one that's from an age in Hancock's career where fusion and weird space jazz funk was kind of the odyssey of the moment and it was certainly one that Hancock was able to really exceed expectations with. This is a long-winded track that is definitely one that creatively shows Hancock and his gang at their best. Number nine, we have Spiritual Beggars with On Dark Waters. Uh, this is a stoner slash groove metal band that has an amat in their ranks, Michael, I do believe, and this is from their album Ad Astra from 2000. Uh, this is a great band based around the fact that this is very guitar-driven, something that the Amat brothers, of course, have been able to showcase in bands such as uh, Carcass or Armageddon or, of course, most recently, in Arch Enemy. However, with Spiritual Beggars, this is one where the guitar and the groove is certainly the chunk that you really are uh, are really focused on. This is a great track that really exhibits that very nicely, and really the entire pantheon of this band's very, very la uh, large and vast discography is able to display this quite nicely. Check this one out and immerse yourself in the world of spiritual beggars. Number eight, we have Between Two Worlds by the band Stonehenge. Uh, this is a progressive metal band from Hungary that unfortunately put out just the one album and a pair of EPs. The album is entitled Angelo Saluente from 2001, and this track, and really just this band in general, is a band that is criminally, criminally in the graveyard of music. Uh, this is a great album that I remember finding out about on an old MP3 download early Bandcamp style of of music website. Well, I forget what it was even called. It was pretty freaking awesome though. Uh, this is a great track that's in multiple parts where you can definitely hear the conflict of the emotion in uh, the voice here. Uh, just caught between just great, great music. Uh, this is a band that is going to be a little bit harder to find their work. However, you can find this song on YouTube just YouTube Stonehenge Between Two Worlds and be transfixed into the land of a progressive metal group that really needed to get a lot more exposure than they did. Number seven, we have Razor of Occam with Pattern on the Stone. This is uh, from Homage to Martyrs, which was an album released in 2009. These guys remind me a lot of a very thrashy slash mellow death uh, version of uh, a lot of other bands that really have forged the path for bands such as themselves. Uh, At the Gates is one that definitely comes to mind, especially on this number. The guitar riffing and the sort of chaotic uh, bliss that you hear in this song is really the the true uh, spotlight that you hear. And this is a band that really had all of the markings of a, a great product, but just never really took off, and one that definitely requires a second listen today in order to really respect where they were coming from. Unfortunately, it just seemed like this was in an age where Mellow Death and uh, really the whole entire idea was starting to fuse out of the public eye, so even throwing in that additional crossover of thrash metal, that little a glimmet of at the gates worship in there really wasn't enough to get this band on the radar, which is a true shame because this is a, an album that is pretty solid. Definitely not godly, however, definitely above average. 
Number six, we have Opisium Triste with On the Crossroads of Souls. This is a uh, death slash doom metal product, and this is off the album Giving Yourself Away from 2007. Uh, these guys have been kind of quietly living underneath uh, a lot of the bigger names in this genre, but for some, these are uh, definitely a heavyweight product. I really love the fact that these extended portions, these extended songs and movements, really just give you all of the a real 10-ton uh, weight to your chest of doom metal while also maintaining a little bit of a death metal side, principally within their vocalization. This is not something that's going to remind you more of St. Vitus. This is one that's instead going to take some of their best ideas, give them an even darker element, and perhaps even throw in a little bit of a funeral vibe. Definitely really love this track, not to mention Giving Yourself Away is one of those unsung gems from 2007 uh, that uh, really went kind of unnoticed by a lot of people, but for those who were able to discover this album, they will definitely tell you it's one that they enjoy quite a bit. Number five, we have Aperian Sky with Reality Principle. This is a progressive death metal band, and this track is also consequently an instrumental, one of the first, if not the first, that this list has spawned. This is from the album The Snow White Rose of Paradise from 2004, and these guys are a product out of Illinois. They've since produced one other album. Now, this is a really, really just very unique product in the fact that the mix on this seems and sounds a little bit off. It has kind of that little campy atmosphere to it of a really limited budget recording, but it still sounds damn good. All of the shredding that you hear is definitely one that doesn't feel that it's uh, 100% in the grounds of progressive metal. It's not going to sound like many progressive bands that you hear. It instead has that harder edge, which really throws in that death metal infusion alongside of it, which for some may actually be a turnoff, but you have to actually give this product room to breathe, and it will really showcase its overall charm and its overall uniqueness to you. This is a great, underappreciated album from a band that never really got the respect that they deserved, and it's one that's worth looking into. This has a very addictive riff pattern within it and it's coupled with the what sounds like to be more of like a keyboard or a synthesizer that really just blows me away every single time. Just putting together this list and revisiting this track I found myself trapped on it for about a half an hour so it's very easy to have that happen so just be forewarned. Number four, we have Dead Horse with the song The Latent Stage. This is off of Peaceful Death and Pretty Flowers from 1991. This is a Houston, Texas based product I've mentioned that my friend Jesse before in the uh, Napalm Death video from earlier this year. I'm mentioning him again. Jesse Schroeder, if you're out there, thank you for Dead Horse. Mainly because these horsecore guys are pretty freaking strange. They're weird. It's like a weird death crossover thrash product that has a lot of humor in there. And they've done a cover of Rock Lobster, which is just one of the strangest covers of Rock Lobster I've ever heard. And Rock Lobster's not necessarily all of that, you know straightforward of a song to begin with. However, with the latent stage, this is one where you kind of get the pantheon of the experience, and I really enjoy the groove and the crush that you hear right at about, oh, the minute and a half mark. There's a really awesome portion to this track that just has my jaw on the floor all the time and me thrashing my neck, and that's really what this uh, these guys are all about. They're all about poking at you a little bit, a little bit of tongue-in-cheek humor, doing things that were really unconventional, and also just really showcasing that they had some skill and they had some chops. Horsecore is actually a term that they used on their first album from 1989, so it's definitely uh, something that was coined by the band, not coined by the media, which is pretty cool. These guys have recently come back with an EP in 2013, thus resurrecting the project, and I have to say, I'm excited for where this may go. Hopefully a full length is right on the horizon. Number three, we have In the Woods with 299.796 kilometers per second. This is avant-garde, as you might imagine. Uh, this is off the album Omnio from 1997. Whenever uh, the court from Green Carnation was off doing work with Emperor, this is what the remainder of his band were, uh, were doing. They did not go on with the name Green Carnation, which actually came first. Uh, instead, they formed In the Woods and created this, like, really strange black metal originally in the first portions of their career, but then shifted into just straight up avant-garde. This nearly 15 minute long track is able to showcase avant-garde at its absolute finest in its uh, late 1990s explosion, which probably happened with 
without you even realizing it. Uh, this is a great track based around the fact that it takes you through so many emotional undulations and the female vocals that you hear about halfway through, about the seven or eight minute mark, are absolutely pristine beauty. These are ones that have just as much torment in it as there are, or as there is, uh, absolute beauty and, and bliss. This is a great track, and this is another one which you can easily get trapped on for a long, long time. You've told me that you've thanked me for Agaloc. You're welcome once again. Number two, we have Christ the, uh, the Crystal Method with Roll It Up. This is a dance and techno song, the second of its kind behind Scooter's uh, UFO Phenomenon from a couple of episodes back. Uh, this is from the album Tweekend from the late 1990s. These guys were hot back then, and now everyone forgets who the fuck they are. It is a song with Filter for uh, the City of Industry soundtrack, I believe, entitled You Can't Trip Like I Do, and everyone remembers Filter. This is a great track because it showcases what uh, dance is all about and techno is all about, especially in the latter portions of the 90s. Just love this sound and love this groove. If you really want to get me on a dance floor, you don't play me dubstep. You don't play me this garbage fucking David Guetta, Jason Derulo garbage that we have here in the 2000s and teens. You instead play for me Roll It Up by The Crystal Method. Give me a couple glow sticks, dim the lights so nobody can see what my stupid ass is doing and let me go to fucking town. That's what it's all about. This is a great groove, a great track, not to mention these guys with albums such as Vegas and Tweekend at the la turn of the millennium just were absolutely on fire and very few people knew about it. It's almost like the hidden secret, the hidden gem that was only explored by the curious. Number one, we have Ice Age with their song The Guardian of Forever. This is a progressive group that unfortunately is no longer with us. Uh, this is off of their album Liberation from 2001. I was exposed to this thanks to a friend off of the, I believe the Iron Maiden band board a thousand and one years ago whose name was aptly Prog Metal Fan. So if you're out there and you're watching this, hello from the future. Uh, I was Unholy Punishment from the past. But at any rate, this is an excellent, excellent example of prog metal at the turn of the millennium. This is back before the explosion really occurred where you're going to hear progressive music in just about every form. This is back before progressive became kind of a, an adjective as opposed to an actual movement. This is a great track in the fact that it builds mood and it builds character throughout the entirety of this album. It's one where the movement itself is able to build and grow and then reaches its crescendo only to kind of recover once again and go back up the mountain. I love this song. I fell in love with it whenever this cat included it uh, in a mix CD for me full of progressive music and I still love it to this day. This is a track that is absolutely unforgettable nearly 15 years later. I think you guys will absolutely love this. Please give this one a shot. You might have to do some digging in order to find it, but it is on Spotify, so if you have Spotify, check it out over there. There you have it, another 10 awesome songs down. We're now up to 80 tracks on this. Now, in the comments below, tell me some of the themes that you would hope that we would do in future episodes, and tell me what you thought about some of the songs from this episode. I am Cover Killer Nation, and this has been 10 awesome songs, 10 awesome obscure songs at that, that you may not know or remember. And of course, make sure you subscribe, that way you are alerted of every upcoming episode, as it is no longer something that's happening, you know, on the day of the week in which they were doing it, or we were doing it. I think I need to go play with my cat.